You all know the meme phrase from the World Economic Forum, you will own nothing and you will be happy. An absurd statement that was actually made at the World Economic Forum's 2016 conference, which the WF had clipped themselves and posted online thinking it was a really inspiring notion that you could live in a world where you rent everything or lease everything from government corporations and somehow you would be happier for it absolutely insane, but there are actually some people out there who are true believers in this kind of trade unionist stakeholder capitalism, really it just means socialism, ideology, and are actively pushing it whenever they can. A prime example of this is my mayor, Calgary's mayor, Yoti Gondek, who believes that you should rent forever and not actually own your own home, and that would make you happier, more liberated, and free. Here's her saying this on camera. So we're starting to see a segment of the population reject this idea of owning a home and they're moving towards rental because it gives them more freedom. Uh, they can travel to different places. They can try out different communities. Their job may take them from place to place. And so people have become much more liberated around what housing looks like and what the tenure of housing looks like. But as municipalities, we haven't kept pace with that change. We're still stuck in the 40s, 50s and 60s. I find it telling that she accidentally mumbled the word liberated and pronounced it illiberated. Nobody is rejecting the idea of 40s, 50s, and 60s style home ownership. Everyone would love that. There's a reason why there's a lot of Zoomers and Millennials sharing 40s, 50s, and 60 memes, making fun of the fact that they can't even pay their own rent while their sort of grandparents' generation could actually buy a single-family standalone home on a single salary. And the reason we can't now is not just because that was just a, a small bubble of an era where that was possible and it was never possible again. It could be possible today. The reason why people feel more liberated renting these days is because people like Jody Gondek and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau have made it way too expensive to own a home through terrible public policy. It's not capitalism's fault. It's not any of the people's faults that socialists would blame. It's the fault of people like Justin Trudeau who allow for extremely high immigration, creating artificial demand within Canada's housing markets, keeping taxes high, keeping regulations high. And then Jody Gondek, when she sees this problem in the city of Calgary, rather than thinking to herself, huh, maybe I should make it faster to build homes than this city and lower property taxes. No, she takes a bribe from Justin Trudeau's liberal government and starts pushing a plan to just wipe out all zoning laws in Canada and forcing hyper densification in all of Calgary's neighborhoods. That's ridiculous. It is trying to bowl over people's freedom to choose where to live by saying that no matter where you live, there could be a sixplex next door, there could be an apartment building, rather than just making it cheaper to build and making it actually cheaper to own a home. These days, who wants to own a home with all the extra costs, with the government changing the nature of the neighborhood that you bought into? People would love, no matter what age demographic, people would love to actually be able to own a home. People would love to be able to own a home and a summer home somewhere else, and they can't even rent their first one. That's why people like to rent. But the, you can just tell from seeing Jody Gondek talk that she has a PhD in urban sociology. She believes that this is the changing sort of, of fabric of city life. It's about renting. It's about moving cities. It's about not having a real home where your family lives or anything like that. Because who cares about family? Because she doesn't believe in the idea of that. She thinks that you should be renting and getting more and more services from the government. That's why she keeps pushing more services, and that's why she keeps, in a city environment where the city should just be taking care of potholes, police, and a couple other things, she's calling climate emergencies, trying to like, uh, like, like charge you for getting a fast food bag, banning plastic bags from grocery stores. She is a big government bully, and you know this because if you ever watch clips of her in city council, condolences if you do, she bullies and natters at people who do not agree with her. There was a man who was opposing the blanket rezoning and saying why it won't even make housing cheaper in Calgary. And she started basically attacking him for disagreeing with them. She is a very petty individual. She has a sub 30%, or I think it's maybe exactly 30% approval rating. It is so easy to have a high approval rating as a mayor in Canada. Olivia Chow 
has a very good approval rating because every new mayor gets, you know, people just take it for granted you're doing a good job. Jody Gondek was so bad at her job, even though there's a lot of middle class people who are willing to say, yeah, she seems nice. She's probably doing a good job. I don't look into it too much, but she's probably doing a jo good job. She was so aggressive when she became the mayor of the city, pushing all of this crazy nonsense that even those middle class, upper middle class voters willing to give the mayor a chance just immediately walked away from her. And it's because she is a true believer. Nahid Nenshi, when he was the mayor, was not a good mayor, but he knew how to move slow enough that Calgarians wouldn't toss him over the side of the boat right away. Gondek is such a true believer. She'll come out and say, well, I think people actually want to rent for the rest of their lives. But insane. No, they do not. And if you actually rent for your entire life, you'll basically pay more in rent than you would even if you just bought a home, even at our high prices. But she has no ability to hold herself back. She absorbs stupid ideas like a sponge. And so she thinks everyone else will absorb her stupid ideas like a sponge. And she goes out into the public and just says what the type of person who actually thinks the WF has good ideas would say. And everyone immediately reacts like she's like a, like a monster from the deep. And this is what needs to be exposed way more. The kind of radical, far, far left ideology that many liberal individuals, and why I'm pulling liberal in quotes, is because these people are not classical liberals in any way. They're leftists. That's the only way you could define these people. Leftists, trade unionists, anarcho-syndicalists, people with these absurd antiquated ideologies that should have died after 1945, but somehow didn't, because, like, you have to, if you look into the, the, what the WF believes, it's like microwaved Italian fascism. It's trade unionism, but on a worldwide basis, it, that's what stakeholder capitalism is. That trade unions, that people who live in your area, that all these different interest groups should be able to tell you how to run your business. And when they can tell you how to run your business alongside other government entities, you don't own your business anymore. And that's why I, at the start of the video, I talked about the absurd notion that you would rent and lease all services and products from government corporations. Because once the government is basically telling you how to run your business on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't own your business anymore. Might have your name on the front, but you don't own it. Uh, this is why in the next mayoral election in Calgary and across Canada, both like municipal elections, provincial elections, and federal elections, you got to vote for people who will reverse this stuff. It might not happen overnight, but in the next 10, 20 years, we need people who will start marching the line of absurdity back towards what we used to have in the 80s and 90s, where we wouldn't push for this insane garbage, where we want to make the government basically dominant in people's lives. And I'm trying to do that now, shameless plug, that's why in Calgary, I'm running for the Calgary Signal Hill Conservative Party nomination. Um, you know, on the west side of Calgary, these are what the nomination boundaries will look like after they change in late April. Buy a membership and vote for me if you can. WyattClaypool.com in the description below. Check it out. But we need people who will actually not just be a little bit more conservative than the current liberals, but people who will actually start shifting the status quo to something tolerable and enforce that status quo. There are way too many Aaron O'Toole's out there who end up, when they fight with the liberals, don't actually oppose the sort of uh, the, the ideological positions they take. They merely say they need to moderate them. That's why Jody Gondek won the 2021 municipal election. I know some people be, are wanting put, to push the idea that somehow they cheated, voting machines, whatever. No, no, no. She won because nobody voted, and all the people competing against her made no case as to why she would have made a bad mayor. If people like Jeremy Farkas and Jeff Davison really weren't saying anything negative about Jody Gondek. They never said really anything that different from her. Yeah, they kind of made noises about wanting to lower property taxes, but they never really made a big ideological break from the big municipal government type I vision that Gondek had. They were almost all being very complimentary to her because they've been indoctrinated to this idea that for conservatives to win, you just have to be a slight step to the right of the liberals and play along, be nice, and apologize for everything that you never did when the media accuses you of it. So in, we need more Rob Fords, basically, is what I'm trying to say. We need more Rob Fords, not the Coke part, but we need more Rob Fords who are obvious conservatives who, when they run for any jurisdiction of government, whether it's municipal uh, like office, provincial office, or federal office, are willing to reverse things, just wipe out, repeal, get rid of stupid liberal programs, oppose liberal ideology, not just make the decisions in government that are better, but openly state why left-wing ideology is toxic like this. This is a 
horrible vision for the future, and we need to kill it. Anyways, that was all I wanted to say today, guys. Uh, if you live in Calgary, make sure to vote against Jody Gondek. If you live in my riding, check out my website, wyattclaypool.com, buy Federal Conservative Party membership. Anyone in your household can vote if they're 14 years old and a permanent resident. And also, if you want to donate to mine and the National Telegraph's legal fund, it's in the Give, Send, Go link in the description below. We are being sued by a billionaire developer for nothing. He's trying to sue us for defamation. Still hasn't provided any evidence for how we did that after over two years of this case ongoing. And our article, when we referenced this guy, the article wasn't even about him. When we referenced him in the article, we merely pointed to a Globe and Mail investigation about him that was out for more than a year and a half before we published our work. Yet he apparently never sued them for it. He's just trying to sue us because he thought he could bully me because he didn't think I had a lot of money to defend myself. I don't, but I'm willing to put every single penny I have towards fighting him. So anything you can pitch into that really helps me out or, again, buy a membership and vote for me if you're in my area. Uh, anyways, that should be it for me today. Have a great one.